my class is approximately 30 students and it's a class of mixed level abilities. I have probably six or seven students that have IEPs which are individualized educational plans and they need extra supports in class and there's actually another uh, teacher in the class that assists with those students. And then I also have uh, very motivated, high achieving, uh, gifted and talented students in that class. So it's a really, it's a mixture of um, everybody. As a document, I think the Bill of Rights um, not only embraces the rights and freedoms that we have as Americans, but one of the things that I think my students got the most from the lesson now that I've uh, delivered it is that they see that the Bill of Rights is still very much active and alive in our, in our daily lives. And I really felt as though this topic of the Bill of Rights captures the, the whole essence of freedom and independence as the history of the United States evolves. So it's sort of that common thread that I can carry from the beginning of the class to the end of class. You should be able to take the key ideas behind the amendments and put them into words that make more sense. Let's say a 2008 vocabulary. So I've come up with a summary sheet. And one of the goals that I have for us in class today is to read the amendment and then match it up, and I didn't do it in numeric order. I scrambled the summaries around. You have to read through the list of summaries and figure out which one matches to the correct amendment. When you look at a document such as the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, there's wording or phrases that maybe most students in 2008 wouldn't understand. I think in teacher speak we call it front-loading vocabulary in which you pre-expose the students to words that you know will be more challenging. And I really took like almost a day and a half just doing vocabulary words. And especially when we started looking at the Supreme Court cases, they really had no idea of what the word affirm means or what does it mean when uh, opinions concur or a dissenting in opinion. So I really, it, that is what unlocked, that was the key to unlocking their knowledge and making sure that they understood the vocabulary first. All right. Neha, probable cause. A probable ca cause, a good reason to, for suspecting that a person has broken the law. Good. So probable cause would be a good example of yesterday when I said that if a person were driving down I-270 and they're stopped for a speeding ticket, yet the police officer notice, notices that, boy, there's a substance on the back of the car that I would say looks a lot like maybe blood. And then they could use that as probable cause to further investigate maybe there's something inside the trunk and then that could lead them on to a search. Once we got the actual Bill of Rights, uh, my students and I, we uh, highlighted words that they could actually relate to when they were reading the Bill of Rights. And I try to use a strategy that hopefully they can use in other classes. It's the idea that if you read something that's difficult, you try to look at the words that you know and try to make sense out of the words that you don't know and maybe replace it with another word that makes more sense to you. And then another part of the lesson was to apply the summary and their understanding of the amendments to an actual uh, current event article that uh, would sort of highlight or embrace what that article was, or that amendment was about. Well, it's like everyone has the right to bear arms. What did you get for the application, Tom? Hmm. What did you get for the applications? Oh, it's on the second page. Gun owners seeking open carry law. Okay. Yeah. It's citizens are protected from unreasonable searches and seizures, and probable cause is needed for short search warrants. 